This presentation is designed to introduce you to Metastock and accompanying software and data. It is not intended as a recommendation to buy or sell. The information, software, and techniques presented should only be used by investors who are aware of the risks inherent in trading. Equus International and Thomson Reuters shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with these companies. Hello everybody, uh, this is Rahul Mohinder. I'm glad to be presenting the new RMO ATM plugin to you today. I'm happy you're joining us here. Um, in this presentation, I'm going to be taking you through the different strategies that the RMO ATM has. And interestingly, you'd find both uh, breakout strategies as well as counter trend strategies in this plugin. Uh, first of all, the RMO ATM was really designed, as the name suggests, to kind of automate the analysis process. The idea being that uh, one spends a lot of time often on analysis and kind of loses focus sometimes on the trading bit. So uh, the ATM plugin or the Automated Trend Modules plugin, as we would call it, is there to help you automate and speed up the process of analysis with something effective and easy so that you could really focus on your trading skills and put on trades based on the different strategies that it has. Uh, just like I was mentioning that uh, whilst it's not only going to make things methodical and simple, I think the most important thing is if we look back, uh, we see that the Armo ADM has kind of been time tested with some of the most tough market situations, including the entire financial crisis that just went by. It was uh, it was very, very good in terms of detecting uh, clear-cut sell signals before the entire fall. Uh, as I was mentioning again, that breakouts, counter-trend trades, these are all part of the ADM plugin. And I think while we go through this presentation, we show you a couple of examples of how you could virtually get out of uh, any difficult situation. Uh, I'm going to take some time to explain to you how do we enter, how do we exit, and the kind of stop we use with each strategy. Uh, first of all, what the entire ATM plugin includes is a bunch of six indicators. It has four templates, so that way you uh, can quickly get going. Explorers, which get you every little situation that you're looking for, and which means even if you're an options trader, this could be pretty helpful. And uh, of course, uh, one of the favorites that I like is the new uh, Explorers which could give you the integrated buy and sell setups on the existing RMO model in Metastock 10. Let's start with the first indicator that we have here, which is the ATM breakout catcher. In this indicator, you'd notice it's basically a histogram which clocks between 1 and minus 1. When you see that the indicator has gone up, in other words, positive to 1, that shows strength, and we could be buying the market above the high of the bar that goes up. Likewise, when you see the indicator somewhere at zero, that indicates neutral, which means there's kind of an undecided mode in the stock. The second thing is when you go negative, that would mean you could go short, and it suggests weakness, which is likely to come up in the stock. Now, to make things a little easier, when you apply the ATM breakout catcher template, and that's pretty simple, you could just right-click, apply template, and select ATM breakout catcher. And you'd get a screen exactly like what you're seeing right now. Notice you have red and blue bars. The red bars are basically indicating that the ATM breakout catcher is negative. The blue bar indicates that the ATM breakout catcher is positive. When you see the bars a kind of a golden or a beige color, that, that's really indicating that the ATM breakout catcher is uh, really neutral. So there's not much to do if it's neutral. Uh, we're really going to be taking on trades when you see red and blue. Now the first time when the market actually goes down, or uh, to be more precise, when the indicator goes negative, we'd actually like to go short below the low of the red bar. So when you see that red bar right there, we'd like to go and short the stock or whatever asset class you're trading. In this case, it's Forex, so we just go short below the low. A couple of ticks below that low would be perfect. Just like when you see blue, you'd go long above the high of that blue bar. Now, in this chart, you see we've gone short somewhere right there, around 156. And 
we're still kind of short till about 136. Despite us getting this blue bar, which really didn't uh, mean much because it didn't really take out the high, which means we couldn't really go long. Unless the high of that blue bar is taken out, we just can't go long on the stock, or, or in this case, the Forex instrument we're trading. Now, you'd also notice at the bottom, which is the x-axis, you have a ribbon which highlights to you strong and weak. So it's pretty much more for your convenience uh, when you view this. You could either look at the color of the bars, you could look at the x-axis ribbons, or you could look at the price verticals that you see here. You see the green and the uh, red lines, the vertical lines. All of them are really getting generated out of the ADM breakout catcher indicator. Now, when you look at a daily chart like this, you can notice we have a couple of signals, and you know it signals pretty much in good time. Wherever you have a red, you go short below the low, and there we go. We, we saw the big crash that came in there. And uh, just like when you have blue over there, you get long, and you're staying long all the way up. So don't worry about the odd red bar that you see there, because unless the low of that red bar is gone, you're still long, really. So you have another red bar, the low's not gone, you're still long. So that way you have the potential to ride through the entire trend. So that's the interesting part of the breakout catcher. No complex analysis. You don't need to worry about crossovers and divergence and all that stuff, overbought, oversold. It's kind of zeroing down straight out to a point where you could say, okay, I want to go short or I want to go long. Uh, Again, uh, there's a very interesting aspect to the template that you have. Right on the top, you'd notice the zone detector indicator and the zone fill. These indicators are going to help us do a very major thing. Uh, one of the biggest risks, or shall I say fears, of any trader is you don't want to put on a trade and see that the market goes sideways. Most of the time, our bad trades are really uh, going haywire just because we put them on in a low volume area or in a sideways area in an area where we didn't have much price movement and probably out of frustration or just out of time erosion we just lost that trade. Now the, the ATM zone detector is precisely going to help us detect are we in sideways mode or are we likely to be in trending mode. So the interesting thing is now if I can really dissect and detect that I am in a, in a trending market, then I definitely want to put on those trades. But if I know I'm in a dormant market, which is probably going to be sideways and range bound, I could just say, forget it. I'm not going to be trading this stock until and unless I get active. So this is what the zone detector really looks like. So when we magnify it, this is how you'd look at it. The dark green line that you see, that is the zone detector line, or called ATM zone detector. We'd call it ZD. And the green histogram, the light green histogram that you see, which is going to be within the ATM zone detector, that's called the zone fill. What this is precisely doing is measuring aspects like volume, price volatility, standard deviations, and putting together by testing the historical data whether we're active, hyperactive, or dormant. If you find the ATM zone detector as positive, which means a value of 1, we would call that active zone. If you find the ATM zone detector, which is again the dark green line at 0, that would mean we're in dormant zone and probably we should avoid taking trades in dormant zone because it's going to be sideways price action and there's not much money on the table to make. Again, if we're in a zone which is hyperactive and uh, let's clarify what is hyperactive really when you find the zone fill or the light green histogram is well positive uh, again it's the zone detector and the zone fill both at the value of one that is when you see the green histogram positive that's telling us that the stocks hyperactive there's a lot of volume there's a lot of money there's a lot of interest which is chasing the signal and in all probability, these are the good trades to put on, and these are the ones where I'd possibly be a little more greedy in terms of a profit objective. So again, basically, we're classifying the stock or the asset you're trading as either active, dormant, and hyperactive. Well, the nice thing is, whatever indicator you like using, whether it's the RMO that you have in Metastock 10 or for that matter, any classical indicator that you're using, if you had 